Hey guys, Daniel James here, and today what we're going to be doing is starting our beginner tutorial series um, where I'm going to answer questions uh, and show in practice some of the beginner aspects of uh, composing music for films and video games that a lot of you want to know, you know, you want to get into this kind of industry, but you don't know where to start. So that's the point of this today. Uh, I'll warn you now, I'm doing this on a live stream. So there's people watching. So if I reference that, uh, it, like something someone said in a chat room that you can't see on YouTube, uh, I apologize. It's just habit. I've been here for like five hours now. So anyway, let's begin the tutorial ser series. Today, we're going to be doing what is a DAW and how do you load a sampler into it to write music? Okay, that's quite a long title, but I'll shorten it down. So what is a DAW? So a DAW, that stands for Digital Audio Workstation. And essentially what that is, is it's the piece of software where all your music will be created. It's where you store your audio files, which be they uh, recorded guitars, vocals, uh, drums, you know, actual recorded things you do with a microphone. And there's also another side to them, which is uh, MIDI information. So MIDI is what you play on a keyboard. It's basically computer information you send to the software uh, to tell it what note to send back to you. And in order to send computer information via MIDI to the software, you need something to receive it. And what I'm going to show you today is how to load a piece of software called Contact, which is a sampler. There's a lot of information I know, so I, you know, you'll have to rewatch if you're slowing down. But anyway, so a sampler is essentially a piece of software that lives in the DAW. So again, DAW is where you create the music, and a sampler is a plugin for the DAW. Right. So a sampler is essentially something which. Um, takes audio files of individual notes of an instrument. So say you have a violin, what you do is play like an open string, then the first finger position, then the second finger position, and you'd have all these individual wave files. And then what you would do is map them across a keyboard like this. So a C note would be a C, a D would be a D on the instrument, and then you can uh, play those notes here record them into the DAW and it would sound back as though you played it on a violin if you're lucky enough to get one that sounds like a real violin. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you everything in Ableton Live, which is my DAW. You can get many others like Cubase, Logic, Pro Tools, although Pro Tools I think is a little bit weak on the MIDI side, but let's not go there today. Uh, Reaper, Studio One, uh, Reason, so many different ones. But today I'm going to show you Ableton Live. They all work kind of the same, but slightly different. So um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you how to load a plugin or a sampler in this case is what we're going to show today into uh, Ableton Live. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to just get rid of these audio tracks that are automatically created. I think it'll probably leave me with one or not. You know, we can mess up. It's fine. OK, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a MIDI track. I'm going to insert a MIDI track. OK. And then I'm going to type in, I want to find contact five, which is my sampler. And Ableton Live is nice and easy for this. I just double click it and it will load, hopefully, onto uh, the MIDI track. So now we have a blank MIDI track with a sampler loaded on it. So then uh, a sampler looks like this. So I have lots of different instruments. You may not have these, but essentially what you have down the left here in contact is a uh, sample libraries. So you buy these from individual vendors uh, and some will cover strings, some will cover brass instruments, some will cover drums, some will cover vocals, some will cover anything you can think of. Um, someone will cover it. And so what you do to load a sample in is you just, you know, you click on whatever you want, double click it and it will load it into the sampler. So it's separate from the DAW. The DAW is only seeing down here, it's only seeing the sampler. And then you can load in as many different samples into the sampler as you wish. But the DAW is only ever dealing with the one sample plugin. So if you're worried about CPU usage and things like that, um, you know, it's only referencing one and then samples go into RAM. There's a lot to cover. I apologize. Anyway, so what, uh, what I've done here is I've loaded a full ensemble string section into the sampler. So if I hit record over here, I can now play the keyboard and it sends back information. So if I hit a C note, I should probably check I'm actually in key. Yep. So if I hit a C note, that is a string section playing a C note. So they've recorded that and that is how that works. So.
that's some really bad playing but you know So that's essentially the basics of loading a sample into um, into Ableton Live or any DAW. So now what I'm going to show you is how to load multiple um, samples into uh, a single instance of contact. So let's say, for example, I wanted to have um, first violins on one track and I wanted to have second violins on another basses on another and then cellos on a fourth okay so let's just say i wanted to play the second you see that i'm only playing the first uh the first patch loaded because it's loaded in here if you look i'm pointing there's no point but <laughs> so if you look here uh this is your stereo track out we're not going to be dealing with that today we'll go into that in another video but what we're dealing with is midi channel so if you look here it says midi channel one okay and then this is midi channel two in A. So we want it A MIDI channel. So you click it, part A, MIDI channel one. I can change that to whatever I want. You know, that could be MIDI channel seven if I want, but for now, MIDI channel one. Now what I'm going to do, and this is the part where it's Ableton Live. So you may have Ableton Live like this, uh, where you can't see the inputs and outputs. So if you look down at the bottom right here, there's these little in and out buttons, uh, these little buttons that do different things. Well, you want to make sure the IO button is clicked on so that you can see this part that says all ins, uh, all channels, master, uh, and then that one can be blank. So what I'm going to do now is create a MIDI track. I actually need four MIDI tracks, but I'm only going to create one for now. So if you look here, this is a blank MIDI track. This has got nothing assigned to it. So if I hit record, nothing happens, right? But now if I am to, uh, if I come down to where it says output, if I change this contact to contact five, which is this here, I can change it to whatever I want. Like, hello. If I click the output now, you'll see that hello is now referenced here. So if I click hello, it'll now give it'll, uh, this box below hello will now say track in. And that will reference the different MIDI tracks of the sampler. So remember how I said here, this is MIDI track one and this is MIDI track two. So now I can change what MIDI track I would like it to have when I hit record. So what I'm actually going to do now is I'm going to leave that blank. And I'm just going to copy this by hitting uh, on my on my keyboard Command D, which is duplicate. So now I have four tracks that all say track in, and they're all let's drag these out. They're all connected to Hello. So if I come up to the first one and change that to track one, that's now MIDI channel one. If I come down here to number two, MIDI channel two, MIDI channel three, and MIDI channel four. So now when I hit these. So this should be first violins. This one here will be will be MIDI channel two, and then the third one. Oh, down here is the basses, and then down here is the cellos. So that's how you set up a multi-timbral um, instance of contact. Now you can take this one step further and turn this into a group track. Now this works very differently depending on which DAW you're working with. In Ableton Live, I'm gonna show you, so let's say you had strings and you wanted to just put a reverb on all the strings, but not individually. So what you do is you select all those tracks there and you group them on Ableton Live, that's Command G. And so now I have a group track, so I can just call this strings. And what I can do with that is I can go to find and let's put arts acoustic reverb on that. So now that reverb is on top. Uh, let's just put a factory room, I don't know, big space, cathedral, whatever. Um, so now that reverb is affecting this uh, this track. So that's that's how you load a plugin, like a, like a reverb. You just look for it and click it. Ableton Live is very simple for these types of things. Anyway, so now that reverb, which is on the group track, which I can fold down here, uh, is affecting all the MIDI information that is coming back out. Well, it's not the MIDI information. It's affecting all the audio that's coming out of the sampler, which is loaded in the DAW. Again, it's quite complex, but if you follow the steps, eventually it will make sense. So now if I play, I have reverb. That is a big reverb on all of these sounds. If I turn it down so you can just hear the wet signal. And again, I can change. So 
So as you can see, that is the basic. So now if I wanted to, I could come in and hit record. Uh, first, let me fix that bass because I'm all about that bass. Right. You know, so we can set our tempo up here. Tempo is, you know, the speed of the music, uh, in case you want to rare. And then we want a metronome. I'm just going to say 100 beats per minute. Uh, me again, this differs on uh, which sequencer you're using. And then what you do is you turn on a metronome, hit record. So you can record a line like that. You probably should have recorded it at the beginning. And then you can go to a different instrument and then record the next line. You know, nice and simple. Uh, you know, come in and record a third line if you want. So as you can see, you can just build up lines like this. You can add whatever you like to it. And let's say, for example, you wanted another MIDI track. All you do is create, you know, insert MIDI track. I'm just going to put it in the group by dragging it. Again, come down to where it says no output, change it to hello. Again, you can name that in initial one, whatever you want. You can change its color. I didn't because I didn't click it. You can change it, whatever. And then come down and say, you know, I wanted a piano. So let's go to MIDI channel five, load up the sampler in the DAW. Again, it goes down. Let's load up a, a piano, in this case, the gentleman. So now on MIDI channel uh, five, which is, you can see here, MIDI channel five will now be assigned to this. So now I can record that And you can see how easily it is just by loading one plugin and then samples into that one plugin, how you can begin to build um, an entire track. I mean, I only did a few bars here, but you can see how easily that could turn into a whole track. So I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, very beginner start tutorial video, whatever you want to call it. Um, so the very bare basics we're going to be uh, talking about will all reference DAW's MIDI audio samples. Um, so that's everything I've showed you today. So hopefully in the next video where we get a little bit more complex than this, um, you guys will be able to follow along just by, you know, replicating these steps in your chosen DAW. Again, I recommend um, trying to figure out or looking into how you would do these things with whichever DAW you use. There's no one, better, one DAW better than another. They all do different things well and others do things crap but then it just depends on what you want to compose with. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you all in the next one.